We're here in Atlanta, Georgia to do a little bourbon hunting. If you haven't had them, this right here is one of my favorite bottles. There's a reason we went bourbon hunting during the day and we don't stay out in Atlanta at night. Was about to go into my room. As I got closer, I realized he's trying to break into the room across the hall from mine. We're here in Atlanta, Georgia at Greens to do a little bourbon hunting. Now I just dropped off my kids and the wife and a bunch of folks at a Taylor Swift concert. So I'm in downtown Atlanta. I wanted to get as far away from the concert as possible and just do a little bit of hunting. Now I know a lot of y'all have reached out and said, if you're in Atlanta, you know, check this out or hit me up or whatever. But realistically, my DMs are a mess. I couldn't find any of those conversations. So I did put it in the Discord and Greens was the closest to where I was staying on the list. So let's give that a try. Field and sound bottled in bond, distilled and bottled by Long Island Spirits, New York. Planning a little trip to New York to do some barrel picks here soon. We may have to give that one a try. And this fiddler here is another local Georgia, like Atlanta distillery that I've never tried. So I want to try this one. This was one I was looking for while I was here just to kind of give it a try. See if we want to do a pick with them as well. Blue metal screw top early times. 50 bucks for Heaven Hill bottled in bond. It's a distillery in Savannah, Georgia. Gray Ranch is literally everywhere in Georgia these days. Great prices on that blue run. You looking for anything in particular? Just browsing. Just browsing? Yeah. Always browsing. That's kind of what I'm doing too. Killing time. I just dropped my family off at a Taylor Swift concert. So yeah, I'm just. The exact same thing. Really? Well, my daughter and her boyfriend. They drove out from, uh, we're like South Central Alabama. Yeah. Yeah, I'm from Opelika. Oh, right on. Same, same trip thing. I made pretty same much. Thing. Ooh. Yeah. Got the new old fourth cast drink right here. I mean, I emailed these guys and they haven't emailed me back. Really? Well, Short Barrel bought them recently. Okay. I've got an older version of this. I think they may change it up a little bit here with this new label, but they haven't emailed me back. I'm trying to do a barrel pick with them. That's one of the bottles I was looking for is that old fourth. I, I hadn't seen it back home. 13th Colonies right here out of just over the... That's a green barrel pick, yeah. Uh, is it the bottle of the cast drink? I'm not sure. It is awesome. These 13th Colony bottles down here have been getting a lot of praise too. You super into bourbon? Yeah, big time, man. What's your favorite one? Yeah. It's corny, but man, just the taste on it. Well, have you, have you ever tried Ancient Ancient H10 Star down there? Which is basically... It's not as old, not as complex, not right. single barrel, but it's kind of Buffalo Trace Blanton's yeah, flavor right. profile, right. right? I mean, it's made by Buffalo yeah, Trace. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Pretty good, pretty good bottle for a yeah. $15 bottle. Amazing how much they have. Right? That Heaven Hill bottle and bond right there is pretty hard to come by. Yeah, 50 crazy. bucks? Yeah. Crazy. That's one of my favorites, man. I like If you haven't had them, this right here is one of my favorite bottles that I've gotten recently. You know, guy, this uh, is out of uh, Fallon, Nevada. The guy at the bottle shop in uh, Columbus, he was talking about the ride. He said that's the best uh, bottle of ride that he's coming from. I got a store. I'm, I'm trying to get them to let me do it to buy a barrel of that stuff, but they, they're completely sold out of barrels till next year. The barrel strength I got from Liquor Lineup in Vegas may be the best bottle I had last year. Really? Like serious, serious good. Like for a small distillery, I like small distillery stuff, so I give them a pass. Like if they're pretty good, then I, I think that's great. But like those folks make whiskey that is on par with anybody. Out of Fallon, Nevada, farm to, farm to bottle, farm to glass, right? They they make all, they grow all the grains, they do the whole thing on their so ranch. So they got something going on. Smoke was just telling everybody, he was like, hey, try it, guys, you will not regret it. Yeah. So, <laughs> no. Thank I saw, sold him a couple of bottles. See, Frey? Frey yeah. needs to hit me up. Yeah. Come on, Frey. Like, what are we, let's get a barrel going. What are we doing here? Yeah. This right here, dude, this 120 proof Knob Creek 9 for $56. Give me a freaking break. Yeah, no. That's a delicious bottle. I just bought one the other day, or I would. I would take that one. I probably need to get on this Milam and Green, but I'm at some point I'm gonna go to like Austin. I'll probably pick it up on that trip. Evan Williams Bottle and Bond, eighteen ninety nine. See, Bottle and Bond always grabs my attention. Yeah, that's right. Because that means you know they didn't cut any corners, that's right? right? It's that's not right. just some sourced whiskey that they picked up from somewhere. Where are they out? Of? I, they are out of what did I just? I just looked at that New York. We'll just go together if you want. You just what? tell me we'll just drive around. Well, you go bourbon hunting with me. I, man, you know what? I would love to do that. I okay. got, I'm actually going to meet a buddy for lunch in about an hour. Well, so I, I mean, I got to have lunch too, but <laughs> like, if you don't want me to come to lunch, I won't come no. to lunch. Somebody gave me like six or seven yeah, places to go, right. but they're all like way out. And yeah. I was like, I'm going to come to this one because it's close. That's right. And then we'll see. I got no plans yeah. after this. Yeah. I was going to bounce around. I was going to find a wedge today too. But I'd, I'd probably get in your way, man. You could just say no, man. You ain't got to make it. No, no, no. It's a thing. fine. You no, just say, no, no, it's cool. I'm being straight I'm okay. I'm okay with no. I'm being you know, straight up with you, man. I got turned down. I'm just messing with you, man. It's all good. How's it going? I bought too much whiskey. 
I, you don't think so? You think this is just the right amount or you think I need more? You need more. You need, okay, I, I, well, this is the first store I'm stopping at. So I'll probably buy more before the day's over. But I, I'm gonna try to spread it out a little bit. Okay, just a little. All right, so no super rare unicorns there, but I, some bottles I am excited about. Been wanting to try some of that uh, new Old Fourth stuff. And then we found another one out of New York. Maybe we could reach out to them. Gold Coast over in Savannah, never heard of them. So that's kind of cool. And then the Fiddler stuff from ASW here in Atlanta was on my list. So some good local small craft-ish distillers or micro distillers, as I guess you would say on some of these. I, I don't know. I, I'm going to quit guessing at how big some of these folks are, but some good finds on our first stop. Now we got to figure out what the second one is, where we're going, see if we can find another store here locally, and then maybe grab some lunch somewhere. This is what my wallet looks like. Completely falling apart. The shine's worn off the leather. It still works just fine. Why replace something that works just fine? So when Extra reached out and said, do you want to try one of our wallets? maybe it's time to at least consider an upgrade. The first thing I noticed is that you feel like a freaking ninja when you gotta pay for something. You want your cards? There they are. It holds five or six cards really easily. It's got a spot here for an air tag. You slide that air tag holder off, it's even slimmer. Now me, I'm an old guy. I got cards for all sorts of stuff. So I went for the Parliament wallet here, which has a little more storage, right? Still that switchblade design, but we've also got a couple of slots in here for extra cards and things. And you can see how that clip same with that one, holds a little bit of cash if you happen to be carrying any. And I've been carrying this guy for about two weeks and I just don't think I could ever go back to one of these grandpa style wallets. From May 16th to June 20th, you can actually save up to 35% off during Extra's Father's Day sale using code BRUZEL at checkout or by going to shop.extra.com forward slash BRUZEL. All right, right around the corner was this cool little area in a place called Elemental Spirits. Hey, how's it going? Oh, not too bad. MGP, an old Carter for $300. Kentucky Animal Batch 12 and four gate. I've, I've had the old Carter. Those are all bottles I want, but I just struggle at paying the price for those. There's a $500 bottle of barrel. I don't even know what that bottle is. That's the question. That's a good question for y'all. Would you rather spend $300 on one really good bottle of whiskey or maybe $600 on two or three really good bottles of whiskey? Or would you rather spread it around and buy a whole bunch of whiskey? Like there's a lot of good whiskey here. I mean, Eagle Ray are sitting there for $50. It makes it even worse. Like I know that old Carter is gonna be good. I have no idea about those other two. It makes it tough to buy those because you just don't know. Like I'm, I'm just buying whiskey. I have no idea whether or not it's gonna be any good. Except if I buy that, y'all might have to y'all might have to pump this video up to like 250,000 views. We might have to we might have to take it up a few notches. Okay, so a couple that y'all have recommended. We've got some more ASW up here. Fiddler Chin Music Rye Whiskey. We've got the Fiddler Soloist. I've gotten a lot of recommendations to try Watershed. Probably gonna pick that guy up, even though it's a little pricey. And then Kings County, we're trying to talk to them about doing a barrel pick. So I'll probably grab that barrel strength bourbon right there as well. Some bottles here I've never seen. Minnesota Wheated Bottled in Bond. <sighs> Y'all know I'm a sucker for weeders and I'm a sucker for bottled and bond. And this has it all right here. And it's from Minnesota, so I assume a small distillery. This one has like a lot of wheat though. <sighs> what about Leopold Brothers? That's a bottled and bond too. Look at this Leopold right here. Leopold Brothers, family distillers of fine spirits, straight bourbon whiskey distilled in Colorado, distilled, aged in bottles. Like, that's why Bottled and Bonds grab me, because I'm looking for small distillers that are doing cool stuff. And Bottled and Bond just means there's no games there, right? It doesn't mean it's gonna be tasty whiskey, but it just means there are no games. So just because it's Bottled and Bond, I'm gonna buy it. So I was looking for short barrel, but I don't want the rye. I want the short, but they've got like a toasted. So that's one of the ones I'm looking for right there. Actually, I need help obtaining that Watershed oh, Bourbon yeah. Six up there, six year up on the top there. And then maybe carrying it. I don't know, I bought too much, <laughs> too much whiskey. I'm way overdone it. I haven't tried any of these, so I'm excited about them. Yeah, I never, like, I don't know anything about Leopold Brothers. What do you know about them? So they're out of Colorado. Okay. And kind of like Tattersall, they're doing, like, really intentional grain sourcing. They're very farm to bottle, so they have an That's what I'm looking for. It's cool, because all those grains are coming out of Colorado. Barley, it's coming from Canada, but not, like, far away. Anything here that I didn't get that you think I should try, bourbon-wise? Definitely. What is that? She's out of Greek Point, New York, and her whole ethos is she's doing like a zero waste thing. She's a 
beyond conforming distillers, so she does all sorts of things, like intentional grain sourcing. She'll buy beets from farmers. She did a brandy that is all Oregon Pinot you know, Noir that was smoked paint. So she's, so she's just, just doing a bunch of weird stuff. Yeah. Which, she, what are those up there? So her whiskey, this bourbon has a little bit of oat in the mouth. Okay. Which is pretty cool. Gives it like this toasted sesame kind of vibe and also a little um, more oily on the palate. Okay. Yeah. Well, grab that okay. bourbon while you're up there. I think that's, yeah. Awesome. Okay. I'm a little iffy on rise. I got I to gotta tiptoe into rise, yeah. but I'll just dive head first into all sorts of weird bourbons. Oh, boys and girls, we are out of budget. <laughs> Is this going to be the shortest bourbon hunting video ever? We're going to have to be more selective. We're going we're gonna to have to be more selective. I probably am going to regret not getting that old Carter for sure. And I really want to try those four gates, but I'm buying so many small distilleries. That's the main focus that I'm looking for. It's really, really cool small distilleries that we might could shed some light on that folks don't know about. If they're already getting a ton of hype, then it's not a lot I can do to help them, right? And I want to find folks that are doing cool stuff and see if we can't share that with everybody. So that's been the main focus, much more so than buying expensive bottles for me. But I do like expensive bottles. Just down the road a little ways, I found this little barbecue joint called Sweet Auburn's. And you know, seeing how I'm basically from Auburn Opelika. I feel like that would be worthy of a test. You know, it's like it's calling my name. It's like a sign that I should eat here. Hey, how's it going? Good. Fiddler's soloist, $14 a pour. $6 Buffalo Trail, $11 Eagle Rare. The ribs, y'all do pretty mean ribs here. All right, let's go with the baby back, some mac and cheese and grits, and then get me a pour of that fiddler soloist up there, please. That's interesting. It's not a lot of jam, but interesting. So this is a high malt bourbon. That's what's turning me off about it. Great flavors on that, but just a little too much maltiness for me. It's a mighty good looking ribs. So Sweet Auburn Barbecue here in Atlanta. Um, the ribs were actually cooked pretty well. I was scared when they brought them. They had some green stuff on them. You know, that's never a good sign. Had a ton of freaking sauce, but they were pretty good. Like as far as like how they were prepared, the ribs were probably a solid seven and a half out of 10. Really good in the middle, a little too overdone on the ends. But then they put like a ton of sauce on it and some chives, I guess, and ah, just too much. Like ribs are supposed to be basic, kind of primal. So I'm gonna take them down a half a point there. Overall, I'm gonna give them a seven and a half out of 10 pretty good little local spot and i think you know maybe if the bartender wasn't stretched so thin might even be an eight out of ten so pretty good spot we got to be a little more budget conscious in here we're, we're way above we're over six hundred dollars on this trip already now y'all have been pumping these videos so they have gotten to that hundred thousand mark which is where i said these bourbon hunting videos make sense but we got some pretty big ambitions with these we would like to try to take these bourbon hunting videos international right can we go to each state can we go overseas can we go wherever and do some bourbon hunting stuff so if you're enjoying these and you want to keep seeing them getting bigger, keep seeing the bourbon budget getting bigger and the location budget, then leave me a comment, hit the like button on this one, maybe share it out to somebody you think might enjoy this type of content. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, hopefully these continue to grow because y'all have really been enjoying these so, so far. They've definitely been our biggest video series on the channel thus far. So let's keep taking them up. See how far we can go with this. I don't know. I love bourbon hunting. So this is a lot of fun. So I found a place not far away that was called Five Points liquor or something like that and typically places with five points in the name are a little rough like realistically four points coming together makes sense you add a five point the fifth point and people just tend to don't want to live there they don't want to be associated with that stupidity because you only need four points and the fifth point just needs to go do something else right just get on out of here and so every place i've ever known that's called five points little iffy not always terrible went over there it was pretty cool like the store itself looked a little rough but realistically it was a cool little area but there was some event going on i don't know what was it but they were charging 15 bucks just to park in front of the liquor store and so so I was just like, I nope, don't out of that. And now we have come, I don't know, four or five miles away to Tower Beer, Wine, and Spirits, serving Atlanta since 1948. Small watershed right there. Finished an apple brandy four year. Ah, bottle and bond from them. A lot of blue run running around here. New South Revival. Y'all heard of that? Haven't haven't heard of that one. Don't know much about it. Let's see if they have a case where they hide their allocated stuff. Hey, all 
right. How about yourself? Thank you. All right. Thank you. With a lot of these big city liquor stores, there's just not an environment for a lot of chatter, right? You got people in line behind you. They're just wanting to get you on out of line. So you're not going to really try to build a big relationship with stores like this unless you find the manager or the owner and you come in an awful lot. But some nice bottles there. We've bought some really awesome small distillery bottles. I did get another watershed. This is their bottle and bond. So the other one was like, I think it was six years old and finished in something. So I really wanted their bottle and bond, which is probably more up my alley. I, I took the other one just because I'm like, yeah, I'd like to get something by them. So all told, we're, uh, where are we at? Where are we at? $700 on this trip so far. But this is research for our barrel picks, right? Like that's why we're buying so many small distilleries. Like realistically, normally I would go out bourbon hunting. I might buy one or two bottles of something that I really wanted. Like I'd probably have bought that old Carter myself at this point, rather than spending, you know, more than that on a bunch of other bottles. So stay tuned for those. If you are really big fans of any small distillery, let me know in the comments comments and we'll see if we can get a sample and have some conversations with them. But also let me know what you think about these bottles that I've bought if you've tried any of them. You know, we are finding a lot of small distilleries. Like we've been really singing the praises of Frey Ranch over the past six or seven months. But, you know, Crittenton's, Ben Holiday, like all of those are, you know, maybe not micro distilleries, all of them. Some of them are, but, you know, they're putting out good whiskey and they're not real big household names as far as bourbon goes. But also in Atlanta, like Tower Wine and Spirits, like these guys, there's arms guard out here in the parking lot there's a dude at the door looks like he's about ready to drop into afghanistan like you ain't gonna ask too many questions right you just get on in get your liquor get on out all right the night's objectives to pick up all the swifties swifty land y'all don't seem as enthusiastic as you were earlier we're pooped we're so tired i just got back to my room and atlanta's crazy like there's a reason we went bourbon hunting during the day and we don't stay out in atlanta at night because it gets very very strange and apparently you don't have to go out because the trouble is coming to me. Was about to go into my room. As soon as I turned the corner, there was something weird going on in the hall. There's a guy standing in the hall with bolt cutters and a backpack and all sorts of gadgets. As I got closer, I realized he's trying to break into the room across the hall from mine. Like right now, he's out there. Called downstairs and they're like, is he trying to break into your room? Like, no, police are on the way. We also have a room like two stories up. So while the guy seems stable and before the cops get here, we're gonna jet on up there and see if we can uh, get out of this situation before it escalates. <laughs> Looks like he's gone. Yeah, well, apparently this gentleman was having a day and he decided very much that he wanted to get into that room. He brought some bolt cutters and a whole bunch of stuff and tried to break into that room. When I came out, he said, uh, they don't make these where you can repair them by yourself like they used to. <laughs> I'm like, all he tried right. To light the thing on fire. Yeah, well, the whole place smells like lighter fluid at this point, right? So, ow. Quite the excitement, isn't it? This is more exciting than Tyler Swift. <laughs> no, not really. Costly, yes, maybe. So apparently we're not going to get our dramatic ending to our Atlanta expedition here. Apparently, even though through the peephole, you can see the ironing board out. You can see the, you know, the lights on. The guys had stuff from inside a hotel room, like the, the silverware holder and some of the silverware. He's obviously been in a room. They're like, ah, the guy that's there checks in and he's with Coke. He's corporate count. Sometimes they leave early. He's probably not it's fine they're not in there we can't get in touch with him but he's not there i've listened to a lot of murder mystery podcasts okay and i'm instantly like duke could be in there bleeding out right now and the guy need to get back in there to get rid of evidence I accidentally locked himself out like i'm going to the worst and and the answer may be somewhere very much in between but i at this point i don't think the cops at the hotel really care they're just like yeah god be who cares it's all right y'all just go to sleep have a good night's sleep We'll figure it out tomorrow or the next day or next week on somebody else's shift. Even if the dude's in there and he's bleeding out, probably won't even make the news in Atlanta. So may never find out. So I guess we'll just go back 
to bourbon hunting here, okay? So we bought some nice bottles today. We got a lot of uh, bottle and bonds from small distilleries, or at least distilleries I've never heard of. A lot of fun new things we're going to try. Really cool liquor stores with a lot of barrel picks and stuff. So overall, eventful, exciting day. They all had a good time at the Taylor Swift concert, and I got to do a little bourbon hunting. So it's like two o'clock in the morning now. I need to get just a little bit of sleep because I got one day of work, and then I'll leave for the Kentucky Derby. So it's going to be a long week, apparently. Catch y'all in the next one.